Hello, everyone. We are live, and welcome to the weekly show of Classroom Without Walls. And my name is I. I'm the host of this weekly show, and we are actually I'm live at VidCon in California. Such an amazing and huge conference. And join me live is the one and the only Mitch Jackson. Hey, hey, hey everybody. What's happening? Thank you so much for being here, and we are live on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Periscope, and YouTube. So wow. let us know where you are joining us from geographically and on which social media platform. And、uh, so today we are going to discuss Mitch. He has、uh, recently published a new book, "The Ultimate Your Ultimate Guide to Social Media." For business owners, professionals, and entrepreneurs, so we are going to discuss this new book. If you have any question related to social media, leave them in the comment section. And I have my dear friend Peter Subton on LinkedIn somewhere and managing and monitoring comments and questions. So if I miss your question, you can tag Peter. And、uh, Peter will let me know. Hey, Melissa from Texas. And、uh, as we are just getting started, let me take a few minutes to introduce our amazing guest, Mitch Jackson. In case you don't know, this amazing lawyer and social media marketing professional. As I introduced earlier, Mitch is one of the most well-known. Lawyers on social media. You are actually the only one I know. The only lawyer、so、I know.、Who's、I'll take、that? it. I'll take it. Right. That's the first secret: is be the first one onto、be、a the platform. First one. Be the first one. Yeah, absolutely. And he has been featured,、uh, um, has been profiled in best-selling marketing books and dozens of publications, including Inc., Mashable, and Wall Street Journal. And Mitch has also presented cutting-edge business and Legal best practices and techniques at the Tony Robbins Business Mastery with his best friend, and、uh, as I mentioned earlier, his new book, Your Ultimate Guide to Social Media for Business Owners, Professionals, and Entrepreneurs, has been ranked as the number one. Yes. I only have the audio version, so on Amazon. And today we are going to discuss social media based on his new book. And he has just launched a new show, which we are going to discuss、uh, more about in today's show. So thank you so much for joining us live, Mitch Jackson.、Dr. Welcome、I. to the show, Doctor I. Thank you for having me. I wish I was at VidCon with you. What an exciting experience! Are you guys have Are you having fun in Anaheim? We are having a great time. We were just talking about this earlier. There are so many YouTubers, young, like ten years old, twelve years old. I just feel so old. <laughs> the older we are, the wiser we are. But、Absolutely. I've always wanted to go to that event, and I'm excited. I want to hear more about it from you,、uh, maybe next week, because what、oh, a great opportunity great. to surround yourself with video and live video experts and pros. And I understand you're. Did you speak already? No, Friday, Friday. Friday, okay. Yeah, yeah. Are you nervous?、Yeah. Are you nervous? I'm excited. Yeah, you're excited. We're okay. We're going to discuss live streaming. Yeah, but like there are 75k people at the conference, so this is definitely the biggest conference I've ever been able to attend and speak at. So really excited. I will definitely be posting a lot more on social media on different channels. We're excited for you. This is going to be fun. Good luck. Awesome! Awesome! So. And、uh, just just in case, I see that we have a bunch of people who just joins us now. We are discussing Mitch Jackson's new book. And、uh, if you have any question related to, to social media, leave them in the comment section. Are you ready to get started, my friend? I'm a, I'm a little nervous. I didn't realize you were broadcasting so to so many platforms at the same time. But you know what? Let's do this. I'm ready. <laughs> awesome! Awesome! You'll be amazing. So my first question is. What inspired you to write this book? And you are a lawyer, so what inspired you?、Uh, inspired you to write this book? So, as I know, you'll agree, and everyone in your audience will agree, social media and digital—it's changing everything, right? It's allowed us to take our local, previously well-known brand. And expand it from local to global. And instead of helping clients one-on-one across my desk, I can now help clients from all over the world. And I wanted to share 
some of the tools, the approaches, and the principles that have worked really well for us with my friends, with other business owners, with entrepreneurs. Uh, and that's why we wrote the book. One of the things behind this particular book, uh, Dr. I, was when David Merriman Scott and I got off stage last year at Tony Robbins, mm. I, I had a two hour line and wow. people were asking questions. And I realized there wasn't enough time to answer all of those questions. And actually, this is two years ago. And so I went ahead and sat down and I reached out to uh, some friends of mine from all over the world that were experts in different areas of social media, in communication, in mindset, um, having the right approach to social media and ask them to contribute chapters to the book. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to answer all the questions and share all the approaches that I wasn't able to do in that two hour line. And I think when it's all said and done, because of all the amazing contributing authors, I think we accomplished that goal and we put together something that every business owner every professional, every entrepreneur should get in their hands and read from start to finish so they understand the mindset, the personalities, and the communication approaches to being effective on social media. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, Stella is here. Welcome to the show. And let us know so I can say hi to you guys. I'm trying to keep up with different social media platforms. So as I mentioned earlier, Peter Septon is in the comment section monitoring comments and you guys can tag him if you have any questions. So I'm really curious, uh, Mitch, how has social media benefited your professional career as a lawyer? I think what it's done is it's allowed us to, to have more opportunities to help our clients. It's allowed us to connect with the legal consumer on a greater scale than ever before. You got to remember, and by the way, when you ask a lawyer a question, you're going to get a long answer. So when you're when you're done listening to my answer, go, Mitch, time out, and we'll jump to the next question. But what I was getting at is I was around before the internet as we know it, certainly well before social media. I remember how hard it was to answer clients' questions. I remember how hard it was to market and build our brands back yeah. in the day. And I think with social media today, it's allowed us to do all of that and more and for me, Dr. I, it's given me and other friends of mine who are professionals who embrace social, it's given us the chance to show our human side, to build mm -hmm. relationships, not only with someone across the street, but with people on the other side of the world. And so it's been a fun, exciting brand building opportunity that, that gets me excited to roll out of bed every single day. Social media gets me excited because I know I can help more people, at least with what I do as a lawyer. Uh, and I know my friends and uh, professional acquaintances who are embracing social, they're doing the same thing. So it, it's an exciting time to be alive, an exciting time to do business, isn't it? Oh, definitely, definitely. I can't tell everyone how much my own personal brand and business has grown as a result yeah. of my social media presence and the content I share, yeah. And hey, my dear friend, uh, Suzanne is here from Scotland. Thank you. See, so from much. Scotland, right and, there. Uh, we also have people from Nigeria join us. So it's amazing. And Stella from London. So thank you so much, everyone. And uh, so you have definitely a very amazing social media journey. And now let's, uh, let's transition to talk about your book. I sure. really love how the first section in your book, you are talking about social media mindset. So that is very interesting because most of the social media books I read, they talk about strategies and best practices, things like that. So why do you have such a section uh, dedicated to social media mindset? And what do you mean by that? Well, I think that's where most business owners and professionals blow it, frankly. It's not that hard. It's not that complicated to set up a platform. Anybody can click in and fill out a profile, set up a Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram account. But unless you know how to use the platform the right way, unless you know how to give and provide value and, and, and be strategically transparent in what the content that you share on the platforms, it's not going to work for you. And so what I wanted to do is start off, and uh, I had Bob Berg, who's a dear friend of mine, write the first chapter to the book. And for those of you that know Bob, or maybe you don't know Bob, he was the co-author of The Go-Giver and The Go-Giver series of books. And what Bob was nice enough to do is share a chapter on 
how we as business owners, as entrepreneurs, as professionals can embrace the go-giver attitude, the go-giver approach to life and business on social media. And he shares examples. And so once people understand they want to be a go-giver before they start building out their social media platforms, uh, they want to embrace the human to human, the H to H approach mm -hmm. to business and life as Brian Kramer shared in his chapter. Uh, as you approach the mindset of it's not about me, it's about the audience, it's about giving, it's about helping, and it's about doing all of this f genuinely from your heart, mm -hmm. okay? Not expecting anything in return. And I think as long as you start your social media journey off with the right mindset, then everything else kind of falls into place. And that's why I started with the mindset. And by the way, I think that applies in business mm -hmm offline too. When I'm trying cases, Dr. I, I'm never the smartest guy in the courtroom. Oh, come on. I am never, I am never the most articulate person in the courtroom, but let me tell you what I am in the courtroom. I'm a genuine human being that the jury after jury selection usually will look to as someone who's taking them by the hand and guiding them through the case because oftentimes it's complicated. And if you can build that trust, that no like and trust factor that we hear people talking about on social media, well, guess what? We've been doing that in court and in trials for hundreds of years. If you're not that lawyer that people know, like, and trust, then your client doesn't have a very good chance of winning the case. And so I tried to wrap all of my offline experiences together with many online approaches to help the reader understand the importance of building the right mindset before they go to the next part of the book, which is understanding the personalities of the social media platforms. Yeah, yeah, this is so good. I read that first chapter and can you explain more about this goal giver and then just give, give, give without expecting anything in return? So what do you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, I think Bob, that is very hard for us to, we can kind of understand conceptually, but how do you actually implement that? So what you do is you have to flip a switch and understand that everything, the content you're creating, the audios, the podcasts, the videos, the live videos that you're creating, like you do so very well, Dr. I, mm -hmm. you're creating this content to help other people. You're creating this content to answer the 20 most often asked questions that your clients, your patients, or your customers might have. You're sharing this content if you're a professional for an additional reason. Professionals need to embrace social like we're talking about and have the right mindset that it's okay to share your human side. Show people that you're a husband, a mm -hmm. father, a coach, uh, someone who enjoys running down at the beach, somebody who enjoys flying drones, somebody back in the day that enjoyed riding and racing motocross. Show that other side of you because you'll start connecting with people who will look at you as another human being so and true. just not as a doctor or a lawyer or you know, or someone else, and so it's 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 a mindset that I think Bob and about uh, ten other authors in the first section shared very very well. And and frankly, when most professionals read that first section, Doctor I, they get it mm -hmm. right. It's like they get it, and it's like okay, thank you for reminding me how I should be approaching life, both offline and online, offline and online. And now that I've got that down, it's all about giving. It's all about helping. You know, read Bob Berg's book, The Go-Giver. I mean, it's excellent. Mm -hmm. Once you understand that, you know, then take things to the next level. Yeah, yeah, I love this. I'm definitely going to check out uh, his book, The Go-Giver, because the first chapter, I really resonated so much with me. So true. And uh, speaking of, you have so many amazing uh, social media and digital marketers in your book and uh, you even got uh, Gary Vaynerchuk to write a book review for you and he calls you uh, a, a, a master connector that is so amazing so how so, have yeah how have you leveraged social media to so, build such an amazing network so yeah. just walking the talk and I don't mean I didn't mean to interrupt you and I'm telling you Lisa my wife of 30 years and my partner she keeps telling me, Mitch, stop interrupting people. So I'm, I'm apologize for that. It's a bad <laughs> no habit. I've, I've got to learn. 
Um, you know, Gary, uh, some of the uh, recommendations and testimonials at the beginning of the book were for other things, were for websites or other things that we've done together. And I think Gary's had to do specifically, and I want to be clear and transparent, it had to do with something else he and I did together, but it was a generalized recommendation uh, that we used because it shows how we're using social media. I will tell you what was really cool about Gary Vaynerchuk, and he did not need to do this, is the week after the book came out on a Sunday morning, my son came downstairs and he's 19 years old and he just finished his first year of college at USC and he's got his phone in his hand. He's like, dad, Gary Vaynerchuk just gave you a shout out on Twitter about the new book. Wow. My friends are lighting up snap right now. You know, they're, they're telling me that your dad has street cred and what Gary was nice enough to do is to share with his audience of 1.8 million people, uh, something to the effect, my my boy Mitch has a new book out. I haven't read it yet, but I want to give him some love. Here's the Amazon link. Now, he didn't need to do that. But the reason he did that and the reason other authors have stepped forward and shared their chapters in my book is because I've always been there for them. Oh, it's, I it's love a two, that. It's a two-way street. And, you know, I first met Gary probably around 2009, 2010, and we just stayed in touch. We've always tried to help each other out. Same thing with all these other individuals. We've just always been there for each other, uh, supporting each other, sharing each other's content. As a lawyer, I love helping people with their legal challenges. So if I can help somebody with a quick phone call, a couple of emails, I'm there for you. And with each and every contributing author to this book, um, it was all done as a favor, which a lot of people don't realize. I had someone ask me, Mitch, how much did you pay Kim Garst to write the chapter about being an influencer and staying an influencer, which is a great chapter in the book. It's, a, said, it's I, a great chapter. Yeah. I, I, I said I didn't take him anything. I just asked if she'd be happy if she'd help me out and write a chapter for my book. She said, "When do you need it?" Uh, same thing with Brian Kramer and Shama Hyder and and uh, Chris Brogan and everyone else. They all stepped up and helped me out. Now, quick story: Mark Schaefer wrote a chapter in the book about how to become known as a professional, as a business owner, how do you become known on social media? And it and it plays off of his book, which was just a fantastic book. When I reached out to Mark, originally Mark said, Mitch, I'm super busy right now. I wish I could help you, but I don't think I have time. And I said, Mark, no problem. I mean, thanks for just considering it. And he was in the process of writing his best-selling book, Marketing Rebellion, that oh, came out. Oh, that was wrong. That, okay. that was, all right, so he was still working on that. So I think about uh, one or two days later, I get an email from Mark and he goes, Mitch, check out the attachment. I was on my way back and I think from Amsterdam and I thought to myself, you know, I want to see if I can help Mitch out. Take a look at the chapter. And he, and he went ahead on the flight back, wrote a chapter and sent it over to Aww. me. Um, which meant the world to me. And by the way, the chapter was perfect. You know, he's like, please edit it. Please make any changes you feel. Get back to me if you want me to make any changes. I knew he was busy. I knew that he was focusing on something else. And of course, Mark's a gifted author, right? He can, on his worst day, he's going to write better than I do. So he sent, he sent over a chapter and it was perfect, but it's all about the relationships on social media. It's all about the relationships. Stop trying to market people, you guys. For the professionals, the business owners, the entrepreneurs, get rid of the M word. It's not about marketing. It's about relationships. And as soon as you approach those relationships with the right mindset and you start helping and providing solutions and making it all about your audience, that's where the magic happens. And, and wow. that's how I got these people to contribute their chapters. So many great points. And I'm also a huge fan of Mark and he's such a great author. But how about this, uh, Mitch? And uh, we all know, I love what you mentioned, you know, how, how about on social media that is always about building and cultivating meaningful relationship. But how do you, when you do have to market something, when you do have like a book or product that is coming out, so what right. do you do, how do you approach this? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I honestly don't like to market anything. What I do like to do is, is share content. And what I have noticed, and think about this for a second, every single person that contributed a chapter in this book has a pretty large audience. So Dr. I, when this book came out and Kim Garst, tweets this out to her 350,000 followers, or Chris Brogan tweets this out to his 325,000 followers, or Gary Vaynerchuk to 1.8 million, 
you've got other people oh, who are to they're tooting they're tooting your horn for you right I, I mean, I mean, so I mean. the best way to market or build relationships is to build an audience that will help share your message on your behalf and they'll do this for you i think it's really important mm. to do what I, what i call and i'm sure there's many terms but it's preconditioning your audience in other words before the book came out I talked about some of the topics and some of the issues and some of the challenges. I was having a conversation about the book almost every single day. What do you guys think about this cover? Who should I reach out to to write the chapter on this mm -hmm. particular platform? I was getting my, my community and my audience engaged in this project, and I was paying attention to what they were telling me, uh, book titles, the order of the book, how many sections should I have, who should, you know. So everyone was was involved before the book uh, even came out, right? And this applies to, let's say you're making surfboards. You live here in Southern California, which is where you are right now at VidCon, and you're down by my house, which is pretty close to the ocean. Let's say you're a surfboard maker and you've got a new board coming out. What you start doing is before the board comes out, you start sharing stories, emotional stories about why you're coming out with your new board. You know, what projects will the funds that you earn from selling this board, will you be supporting to make the community a better place? What wow. professional surfers can you can you share this board with ahead of time so that they start using this board before it's available to the general consumer? They start winning competitions with this board, the design of the board, the name of the board. You crowdsource all of these ideas oh, before you ever roll the board out. Once you roll that surfboard out, everybody wants it, right? And then once you roll that surfboard out and everybody wants it and buys it, then what do you do? Then you post promote it. You come back full circle and you start telling everybody about what just happened. What did they just watch? What did they just observe? And that's how you continue to stimulate the sale of your surfboards a year, two year or five years later. So it's kind of a dance that you can you can take that maybe doesn't have as much to do with marketing as it does to do with just building relationships with people that you want to help and they want to help you. Oh, this is this is so good. Right? I, you know I, that you, you you're a doctor of philosophy. You know how no, people come work. On, no, it's I'm just like, no, no, not, not enough practice. But I so agree. I feel like I'm not sure about uh, people in the live audience. Like for me, I'm getting ready to launch something and I always feel like I need to keep this thing like a secret, not so much a secret, but to be as perfect, as prepared as possible before mm. I share any piece of information with my audience. I guess that is maybe speaks to my fear of making mistakes. And about what I'm hearing from you, Mitch, is that you don't have to wait until the launch minute and go out there earlier before you start the, the final launch and get everyone involved so that others can do the marketing for you. And then it becomes our project, our book, our launch instead of your own launch, something like so, that, right? So that's exactly what it is, but also, and it's not a coincidence, I mean, You've got your doctorate degree, you're a perfectionist, I'm an attorney, a lot of attorneys in my mastermind and professionals are perfectionists. The first part of the book that talks about mindset, what we didn't talk about, and it's my fault I didn't bring it up, is you want to give yourself permission and that you don't have to be perfect on oh. social media, okay? It's more important to be human than it is to be 100% perfect. So. As a professional, if you shoot for that 80% mark, in other words, 80% of how I say something or 80% of my video, it's good enough. It, what's more important is to get it out there and add good content. And the biggest mistake that a lot of professionals make on social media is they start, they talk about really boring things, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> it's like buy my widgets or just things that I would never watch. And what I love to see people do is figure out your why. What's your why in life? Like, why do you get out of bed in the morning? What's of interest? What are your hobbies? What are your passions? And share that stuff on social media. Every once in a while, you can loop it back to your practice, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you share your why, you don't have to have a perfect message. People that enjoy watching, you know, watching you water ski or people that enjoy surfing, 
look, they're just glad that they found someone that they can connect with who enjoys the same hobby, passion, sport, or interest that they do. And that's what connects us as human beings. Once you connect on that deep why level, okay, everything else just falls into place. I just love this. I just love this. Yeah, this is great. And we have so many people, 40 plus people join us on multiple social media platforms. I'm so I sorry. Lori's here, Nancy's here, Rain and Katie. I'm sorry, I can't give everyone a shout out. But here are a few questions that Peter helped us uh, uh, collect it. So thank sure. you so much. So if you don't mind uh, answering a few questions from the live audience. So here are, this is something I just discovered. Everyone, if you have a live show or whatever show, this site is called Slido, S-L-I dot D-O. So I asked my dear friend Peter to enter some questions that he spotted from the live audience. And, uh, and uh, so here is uh, maybe this question, when you Google what he, what is the best time to post on social media? Right, right. There are many answers. What is your opinion? And thank you so much, Arsala, from LinkedIn. So there's a couple of questions there I can answer in one. I'm a big proponent of, of sharing content in real time. In other words, and I love newsjacking, and that's why uh, David uh, Norman Scott has asked me to be at Tony Robbins because he uses what I'm doing as an example for real time engagement, real time newsjacking. So to answer that question, when something happens in your industry, in your profession, something that's of, of interest to you that you have a comment or a podcast or a video about, that's when I like to post. When everybody's talking about something, I like to create content right then and there about that topic, give it a unique twist, a unique perspective. If I'm a lawyer and it's a legal issue, I will never ask someone, hey, dial my 1-800 number if this has happened to you. <sighs> you don't want to do that. But what you can do is say, for example, and this is not a political conversation, it's a Twitter conversation. It's kind of interesting. Uh, the court came down yesterday, the appellate court, and talked about how if you're a politician, you're not allowed to block people on Twitter. And I'll just generalize it as that. They talked about somebody in particular, and your, your listeners and viewers may know who I'm talking about, but they said, if you're a politician, a public figure, you can't block people on Twitter. That's a fascinating topic. It resonates with social media agencies, with celebrities, with politicians. And so I could have easily jumped on and talked a little bit about why under our First Amendment rights, politicians or even public figures who happen to be have a political uh, slant towards something, why they're not allowed to block other users on Twitter. I could share my legal expertise behind that if I have time to do so. Um, so the right time to post on social media is when something happens. Get involved in the conversation, okay? Mm -hmm. if that's the easiest way to type, to kind of ride the the energy wave as to what the conversation, that trending hashtag, that trending topic is on social. The other question I saw was how often should you be posting on social media? As often as you can, you guys. I can tell you right now, this is the least expensive branding real estate in the world. <laughs> I mean, it is. And there isn't anybody out there that's posting enough on social media. I don't care. There might be one or two people but for most of us, we could all be posting quite a bit more. Keep each post, each bit of content different, unique. Uh, if you have a budget to bring in other people to help you create content, create good storytelling, energetic, uh, pithy content that people are going to look forward to. It's going to knock their socks off. You know, you, you can't post enough content on the different platforms. I think the I think where a lot of people get boxed in is, for example, some of the professionals in my mastermind, Mitch, I don't feel comfortable on video. Mm. You know, so so how I, can I, I hear that a lot. Right. We always hear that a lot, right? And so I get that. I get that, right? So I don't like how I look on video. I don't like how I sound on video, but video has just totally changed my practice. So I'm all in, right? I mean, you got to get past that. But until you can get past that point, there's podcasting, there's audio, there's writing a blog post. Uh, there, there are so many different ways to engage and create content on social media. And you wanna just keep pushing yourself. 
Give yourself permission to take that next step. It's like riding a bicycle. While you might not be comfortable with video and live video today, if you take little bitty steps each and every day over the next 12 months, a year from now, you're going to look back. You're going to be killing it on social media via video and live video. And you're going to be laughing about, oh, my goodness, I can't believe I was afraid to go live. Right. It's mm -hmm, a journey. Mm -hmm. And we all started that way and felt that way. But the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. So create as much content as you possibly can. Bring in other people to help you create content if you can. And then even more important than creating content, and you know the answer to this, Dr. I, what's even more important than creating content is engaging with your audience, right? So it's, it's sharing other people's content. It's replying to what other people are saying. It's using some of these platforms to help you know, expand your sphere of influence when it comes to commenting, replying, sharing other people's content. Oh, totally. and once you do all of that, uh, you know, you're on, you're, you're on a fast trajectory towards success. Totally. I love uh, what uh, Mark Schaefer mentioned, the economic value of content that is not shared is zero. So totally, can you imagine spending hours and hours producing amazing content? Nobody's sharing, nobody's engaging with you. That is that can be very, very discouraging. Yeah. So you yeah. were talking about, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, if you're busy like I am and like you are, you know, use technology to help stay on top of what your audience, what your family, what your friends, what your clients are sharing. Use Feedly, use uh, Agora Pulse, use other platforms. Full disclosure, I'm a brand ambassador for Agora Pulse. Uh, follow, follow all laws and regulations, FTC rules, full disclosure regulations, but use platforms to, and Twitter list and Facebook friends list to keep track of what everyone's posting so that you can go to one list, you can stroll mm -hmm. down, I can see what Dr. I is posting and I can immediately click, comment and share. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. you can actually use technology to help save time, become more efficient and, uh, and, and just be more effective on social media. Yeah, yeah. I also love so many points that I want to go back to. And you, you were also talking about news jacking. And everyone in the live uh, audience, Jeez. and they were commenting, talking about how important it is. So can you please share with us some quick to-dos and not to-dos? Because I have seen news jacking yeah. go wrong. Oh. People don't know. And especially yeah. some brands, when some tragic events were happening, people were taking yeah. advantage of that. So just quickly share with us a few tips in terms of news sure. checking. Sure. So first of all, David Merriman Scott wrote a book, uh, which is available on Amazon. It's just a couple of bucks. It's called News Jacking. He also has some courses on news jacking. I would encourage everyone to read the book, take David's courses before trying to news jack because there is a right and wrong way to do it. You can shoot yourself in the foot if you don't do it right. But to mm -hmm. give you an example of a couple of right ways to do it is when Bill Cosby was originally arrested and accused of putting drugs in uh, women's drinks, I was down at the beach taking a run. It popped up on my phone. I stopped. I think I did a Periscope or Twitter Live, whatever the platform was back then, about my daughter's just getting ready to go to college. One of my biggest concerns as a father, much less a lawyer, is that somebody put something in her drink. That's a father's mm, nightmare. Uh. This just happened with Mr. Cosby. I don't know what did or didn't happen, but under California law, you could be criminally charged, and I talked about that, and civilly charged. And I just broadcasted that out immediately. I didn't ask for anybody to call me. Um, it was just something as a father that concerned me. I did the same thing when Seymour uh, uh, Hoffman died of an overdose in New York City. Can you sue a drug dealer for, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for selling an illegal substance that causes an overdose? Or when we had a law here in California that created uh, a new statute, on sextortion, if you have a past uh, spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend or partner that puts explicit material on the internet, photos and videos of you without your consent uh, to try to ruin your life, you know what are the ramifications? And California came out with a statute that criminalized somebody doing that, right? It's not right to do. Mm -hmm. I immediately did a blog post on that statute talking about the statute really wasn't written as well as it could have been. Um, in all of those cases, reporters saw what I was putting out there and then reach out to me. And by the time I got back to the office with respect to the Bill Cosby or Hoffman case, uh, you know, I had 10 or 20, 10 to 15 to 20 different phone messages from reporters to do interviews. With the sextortion statute, 
when I posted that blog post, Dr. I, it was like posting the crickets. Mm -hmm. I was interested in it, but nobody else was really interested in it until a year later. A year wow. later, I got a call from USA Today, and it was a reporter that was doing a story on the uh, Rob Kardashian, Black China, Instagram photo scandal that was going down. This is about a year, year and a half ago. And I told the reporter, I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. I, I'm not to speed on the Kardashians or Black China, right? And so she explained to me what was going on. And she said, Mitch, I'm looking for an expert in California who can provide me with legal commentary on the sextortion laws in California. I came across mm -hmm. your blog post last year. So you're the person I want to talk to. And I said, give wow. me eight minutes. Let me call you right back, which is what I did. And it turned out to be a full page uh, article uh, on USA Today about that topic with me profiled as the expert. That wouldn't have happened. That's had amazing. Well, it, it, and that's the power of newsjacking, okay? There are a lot of other lawyers in California that have a lot more expertise about sextortion and defamation than I do. There really is, mm -hmm. but there really are. But the, but the issue is the reporters weren't able to find them as easily as they so were true. able to find me. And so if you talk so about breaking news stories the right way, and you, you keep a positive spin to it, don't point fingers at people, but just share your own unique take on that. The reporters are looking for something different to talk about. They're looking for a new perspective. And so newsjacking has really been a, a powerful tool. The other powerful tool that's worked really well for us is user-generated content. Mm. Um, you know, so for those of you out there that aren't using user generated content, or if you want to know more about what that is, connect with Tyler Anderson out of, uh, he's a CEO of Casual Fridays out of San Diego, and he's got a company called TAC, T A C K. And dive in and Google some of Tyler's presentations because it's, it's one of the most powerful social media amplification tools that I've seen as far as having your clients and customers having your clients and customers promote your business, your products, and your services for you. It's user-generated content. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful. And uh, that and newsjacking are two things that have me really excited uh, from, from this point through the end of 2019. Wow, I love those two tips. They are just so powerful, especially like I, I'm definitely going to give myself some homework to practice to check out trending topics and to do a better job and also try to promote more user generated content i think that is the best way to market ourselves in this day and age yeah those are great and i want to ask uh, i want to share another question sure. from the uh, the live audience so first of all i really love this uh comment from nancy everyone needs to know that lawyers just all of us we are people so i i really agree most of them are yeah <laughs> so i love this comment from my dear friend Lori. she asked how do you advise people on how much to share and mm -hmm. i i think I'm not sure if this is on the similar page as this comment from our salon and like giving mentality when you are giving so much by the same time and you still have your own bills that we have to pay. So mm. I don't know if, uh, if Laura is talking about, you know, the personal side of you, how much do you share or how much free content do you give? Maybe you can talk about both. So share as much as you can on as many different platforms as you can. I look at the platforms as welcome mats into my life, into my law firm, into some of the other businesses that I have. And I try to intentionally share on all the other platforms as much as I can. Like I said, none of us are sharing enough. We're not creating enough content. We need to create more content. Uh, having said that, uh, with respect to that follow-up question, um, what you want to keep in mind is that if you aren't relevant on social media, if you're not building your brand on social media, if you're not amplifying your your song your internal song on social media in my case it's my legal song you're not going to be relevant okay mm. there's a reason why that usa reporter reached out to me and not somebody else in california it's because she saw my content on social media she had the perception that i was the expert in california and i knew what i was talking about but once again they she, she could have called a professor at ucla or usc she didn't have to call me, but she knew I was easily accessible and reached out to me. So you're creating content uh, in a way where you're balancing your time, your time with creating content, with doing your job, with enjoying your profession. 
I use platforms to help me share content like Agora Pulse when I'm in court oh, trying cases. Yeah. See, that's, that's the secret is you want to plan ahead. So on a Sunday night, I'll sit down and if I have a one week long jury trial that following week, I will schedule content in Agora Pulse. You can use Hootsuite or Buffer to go out and send to all the major platforms two or three times a day on Monday through Friday while I'm sitting in court. I've actually been in court in the middle of trial where opposing counsel, who I know, leans over and goes, Mitch, how did you just share this tweet? How did you just post this on LinkedIn? You're sitting right next to me. They didn't have a clue that that content was being shared through a third party platform like Agora mm -hmm. Pulse. So be smart about how you create and share content. And of course, balance that with what you're doing for a living. But I will tell you, having been around before the internet, when websites first came up in 1996, at least that's when our website came up, fast forward to social media and digital today, I haven't come across a better branding, marketing, and income generating tool as I, as I have with social media. This is a complete mm -hmm. game changer. Stop making excuses for not building out your social media uh, digital footprint and instead spend your energy building it out. It's that important. Just make sure you build it out correctly using the right mindset, personality of the platforms, and then use the communication approaches, you guys, in the third section of the book to communicate effectively on social media. You can do everything that Dr. I and I are talking about, but if you're not communicating persuasively mm -hmm. and in an effective fashion, it's not going to work for you. So that's why in the third section of the book, Dr. I, I reached out to some of the best communication mm -hmm. experts on the planet and people like Carmine Gallo, who wrote the book, mm -hmm. Talk Like Ted. And for those, uh. of you that, for those of you that don't know Carmine, he interviewed 200 top TED speakers you know, and what do those 200 top TED speakers, what do they have in common and what are they doing in that 18 minutes? And Carmine wrote a chapter just for my book to help people on social media communicate as effectively as these top TED speakers. Uh, I think there's 18 or 19 communication chapters. So there's a right and wrong way to communicate. And once you learn everything else about social media, when you're doing a podcast, when you're doing a video, when you're writing a blog post, if you communicate the right way, oh, watch out. I mean, it's like it's like watching the U.S. women's soccer team in the finals, right? And that's, that's how beautiful <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, if right, you can communicate right. on social media, you, you're going to give your readers goosebumps. They're going to start talking about you. They're going to start sharing your products and services, and um, you're going to come home with the gold medal. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. I just saw that Mike Alton joined us. We we're just talking about you, Mike. Absolutely. And, big, fan of, big fan of Mike Alton. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. So I uh, just like I'm just uh, trying to be mindful of our time here. And you mentioned that you interviewed 47 uh, leading digital social media marketing experts in the book. So after you interview so many people, are there some common themes? That you notice among those expert experts and the stories they shared or expertise that they have any commonalities you can share with us well if mike's still here he's the perfect example and mike we've been talking about agora pulse and i can't remember the last time mike's ever said no to me he's always been very generous with his time with his expertise and i think the common thread as with mike and everyone else that shared in the book for the most part is uh, their generosity, their ability and willingness uh, mm -hmm. to help if they have time to help. And if they didn't have time, uh, just to let me know up front, to say no, so mm -hmm. that we can all move on. Uh, I think one of the most consistent success mm -hmm. factors from a business perspective that I'm noticing, uh, not only from, from my friends that share chapters in the book, but from successful clients and, and companies that I've helped start up over the last 33 years of practicing law, mm -hmm is that they, they take consistent action on a daily basis. Yeah. There are a lot of people out there, you guys, that have great ideas. But what I've noticed without exception is the, the people and, and the companies that are successful, those are the companies that execute and take action. And they keep executing and they keep taking action regardless of what, regardless of if they don't get the results that they're looking for. They take a step back, they reevaluate, Maybe they'll they'll get some third party input and then they'll keep moving forward. Okay, 
I think a key yeah, sure. ingredient to success, you guys, is it's important to know what your goal is. I get that. But too many people focus on the goal instead of the cause. If you focus on what the cause is, in other words, why am I not getting more clients or why aren't I getting as many uh, shares on my blog posts as I would like or how come there aren't that many people watching my videos? If you focus on the cause and fix the cause, you'll, you'll, you'll solve that problem and you'll reach your goals. Go back to the cause, focus on that, and everything else will fall into place. And I think everybody that contributed to the book, Dr. I, focuses on the cause to get the results that they're looking for. Wow, I love this, love this. This is so good. Yes, amazing. And you're also talking about uh, video content. And you yourself, you are such an early adopter of video, live streaming video content. And recently, you just launched a new show, mm -hmm. right? So first of all, tell us more about your show and then share with us how like embracing a video content has really helped you build your personal brand and grow your business and then share some tips with us. Sure. So, you know, I'm, I'm still figuring all this stuff out too. It changes, right? Just as soon as you figure out something out, a new platform rolls out, a new device rolls out, a new tool. So when I was down in San Diego two weeks ago at Social Media Day San Diego, um, I spoke on stage about recent legal slash business, uh, you know, uh, developments in 2018, 2019, things like that. And people came up to me and said, Mitch, you need to have a, a YouTube show talking, sharing all of this for the, the online business owners in the audience. And, and they were right. In other words, there's so many people out there that have started a business online or they've got an existing online business, but they're not really sure what to do next. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll look at it from an outside point of view and I'll realize that there's 10 things that they need to do completely different to take things to the next level. So because of the feedback, because of the feedback I got, because I asked, what can I do? What would you like to see? We created the online business show. It's onlinebusiness.show, onlinebusiness.show. And it's a new YouTube show where what we'll be doing wow. is we'll be sharing specific tips, approaches, and ideas to help online businesses avoid problems and be successful. I'll be sharing my own tips. I'll be bringing in guests, uh, probably most of the authors in this book, maybe you, Dr. I, if you're up for it, and, 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 and drilling down on a particular topic to help online business owners find success. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. And I also enjoy creating this content. We'll be repurposing a lot of existing content. And that's another secret. How do you have the time to do all this? Well, if you wrote a blog post three years ago on the difference between a corporation and a limited liability company, what are the pros and cons of, of each, right? You take that prior blog post, you bring it up, and then you use that as a loose talking point template for your YouTube show. Yeah. That's how you save time. That's how you create good, current, interesting, valuable content. And, and that was kind of the, uh, the idea behind the latest YouTube show. So we're, we're actually still kind of, you know, putting the final touches on everything. It's been fun, but if anybody would like to uh, subscribe and get updates as to when the first couple of episodes drop, if you go to onlinebusiness.show, you can get updates through email, through text messages, or subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube. Well, I will make sure to enter the link in the comment section. I will Thanks. also make sure to enter the link to Mitch his amazing book that we have been hearing about and uh, it's such a great book, so great. So any tips that you can share with us, Mitch, in terms of leveraging video or live streaming content to grow our business and to grow our personal brand for our I live audience? Absolutely. I mean, you're at VidCon right now. So you're around, you know, the top video and live video, you know, uh, experts, uh, influencers, professionals on the planet, 70,000 people in Anaheim right now. I think for most of my friends that are professionals and business owners, start with this. Keep it simple. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love okay. shooting video on the go. Okay. If you're, if you're leaving the courthouse, if you're leaving, if you're a physician uh, leaving the hospital and you have something you can share, just stop, pull out your phone and shoot a 30, 60, 90 second video. Uh, maybe edit it on your phone just a little bit or when you get home, share it on the platforms and be consistent. Share good, interesting mm -hmm. content using emotional story, storytelling techniques, and that's critically important. 
uh, and share that on a daily basis on the different platforms. That would be my advice. I see too many people, it's paralysis by analysis. They, I need a video studio. I need these lights. I need this camera. I need a script. I need to be perfect. And guess what? After a week, nothing gets done. So true. And you and I both know what connects us to other people is when we look them in the digital eyeballs, when we're shooting these quick videos, just bopping around town, that's what's of interest. I think people really enjoy this stuff, especially if you're a professional that most people don't have access to. Yeah. Uh, Robert, yeah. Robert, I think it's Robert Caldini was talking about the power of perceived expertise. And if you are a professional, mm -hmm. if you are an expert, don't hide that on social media. In other words, people will put a little bit more weight on what you say and what you do because of your expertise. Don't brag about it. Uh, you know, don't shine a spotlight on yourself, but also don't run away from it. And I think for the doctors, the lawyers, the CPAs, the, the executives out there, um, let people know what you do for a living. And based upon, you know, my feedback and my experiences, this is what I think. Have an opinion. Yeah. Have an opinion use your mobile device to share that opinion with the world. And guess what will happen? The world will do a 360 and come back to you tenfold. Oh, I love this. I love this, especially sharing your opinion, have a position. I remember even, uh, yeah, exactly. In Mark Schiffer's book, he was talking, the new one, Marketing Rebelling, he was talking about even brands that have taken a stance on even like controversial political issues they are more likely to cultivate a loyal community. And uh, so I, I, I really agree. And I just want to give my dear friend Peter a quick shout out. He shared your YouTube channel. Everyone, you can check out. Oh, thank you. thank you. And thank you so much, Peter. And uh, we are just wrapping up here and uh, and uh, resonating with, with what you shared earlier. Yes, totally, Stella. And uh, emotional story, yes. And keep it simple. Absolutely. So true, so and true, and, so and Dr. Dr. I, my favorite part of the book is the third section, just because the communication tips talk about how to, how to communicate on a live video, how to communicate when you're standing in front of a room uh, of one person or a room of 2,000. I mean, all of these communication tips I, I enjoyed reading because I learned from them as a trial lawyer. Share, I'm share, constant... uh, share a few, sorry to interrupt you. Share like three quick, your personal favorite tips with well, us. I'll, of... I'll share a communication tip that's made that's helped me win multi-million dollar jury trials for my client, okay? This works, you guys, in court. It works online during a blog, during a live stream. It works from the stage. And it's a five-step and I'm generalizing right now, but it's a five-step persuasion process. And the first thing you want to do is you want to state the problem. That's the first mm -hmm. thing you have to do. You have to be clear and concise about it. State the problem, okay? You can state the problem in a sentence or two. You can state the problem in a storytelling fashion. Mm -hmm. But make sure your audience, whether it's a jury, someone on social media, or an audience, or, or in a conference room, okay, uh, state the problem. Number two, agitate the problem. Look, if we don't fix this problem, uh -huh. this is going to happen. If we don't start creating better live videos, we're not going to be able to reach the audiences that we want, and we're not going to be able to sell as many products or services as we want. And if we're not able to sell as many products and services as we want, we can't help the consumer. So you want to agitate the problem. And you can agitate the problem by using certain buzzwords, once again, by storytelling. Once you've stated the problem, number one, number two, you've agitated the problem. Number three, state a, a clear and concise solution for your audience, for that jury that I'm standing in front of. Not last week's jury or next week's jury, this particular jury. State a solution that works with your immediate audience. The fourth step is show how your solution will help this particular audience. The fifth step is some type of call to action. Normally on social media, I'm not a big fan of calls to action. Okay, nobody likes to be sold. Nobody likes to be marketed. I certainly don't. So, uh -huh. so I usually in this fifth step say something like, listen, I've, I've, if you guys are interested in learning more about this, I just shared a new post over at streaming.lawyer. Check it out, reach out to me with any questions, make today a masterpiece. I don't do that hardcore call to action. Now, if I'm in court and I'm talking to a jury and I've gone through stating the problem, agitate the problem, state the solution, 
How will this solution help everybody here in the courtroom? My fifth step is clear and concise. I pull up a jury mm -hmm. verdict, verdict form and I fill it in for them. This is what I want you guys to do when you're back in the jury deliberation room. I don't want any misunderstandings. On this box, check here, check here, check here, write in this dollar amount. I circle it, I underline it, I highlight it, and I thank them for their time, and I hope they go back there and do their job. So depending on the audience you're in front of will dictate that fifth step. The big problem people make, Dr. I, is they jump from step one to yeah. step five. OK, and, and I don't care if you're trying to try a million dollar case, if you're trying to sell products on social media or if you're talking with your spouse or partner about what movie to see on a Friday night. If you walk through those steps, you're probably going to get the outcome that you're looking for. If you jump straight from step one to step five, it's not going to work out. Wow, this is amazing. I love those five steps and I can't wait to like revisit this section of the book again. And I shared the link uh, to the book in the comment section on multiple social media platforms. And we are really just wrapping up here. So share with us, Mitch, where can people get a hold of you and learn more about you and, uh, and all the other good stuff? Yeah. Sure, absolutely. So thank you for having me on. And I think the easiest place for people to go is go to streaming.lawyer. You know, that's because of live streaming, right? Back in the day, streaming.lawyer. <laughs> it's my non-legal social media live streaming blog posting area. My law firm's jacksonandwilson.com. And, uh, you know, just Google me if you guys want to connect, if you guys have any follow-up questions. Uh, you know, if you're a friend of Dr. I, you're a friend of mine, and I'd love to help you out any way I can. And enjoy VidCon and good good luck on Friday. I'm excited for you. Is it going to be is it going to be on video? Are you going to tape it? Or yes, it we are going to. So Goldie Chen and me and Stephanie Liu, and we have two other people on the on the panel, and we are going to live stream to multiple channels. Super ah. super excited! And uh, and uh, I was told that our room can host 500 people. Ooh, nice, and, uh, nice. So, well, tell us, tell us. I'm going to apply some of the tips that you just mentioned. Please do, please do. Uh, tell oh Stephanie, God. tell Stephanie hi. I'm a big fan of Stephanie Liu. She she's doing a great job on social media and live streaming and Facebook. And uh, you guys are gonna kill it. I wish I was there to watch. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, check out Peter. He's so amazing. He just summarized the five tips. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Peter and Lisa. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, everyone who are joining us on multiple social media platforms. And I really appreciate you guys. And next Wednesday, I have another amazing guest to come to the show. And we are going to discuss copywriting with my friend Ooh. Jeff Hunter. And uh, so definitely join us next week, the same time, same location. And thank you so much again, Mitch. You You're are welcome. amazing. I want to make sure you check out Mitch, uh, his book. And uh, I shared the link in the comment section. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. I. Take care. Make it a masterpiece, everybody. <laughs>